Come on, Barty, let's go party! We are sure that by now you have already watched or heard of the movie Barbie. This movie has gained polarized opinions, but without a doubt, it has shaken up the cinematic world and become one of the most discussed topics of the year. Let's take a look at seven phrases from this movie and learn how to use them. Number one, to burst someone's bubble. Thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. At least, that's what the Barbies think. After all, they're living in Barbie land. Who am I to burst their bubble? Imagine that the bubble is like someone's excitement or beliefs or their own world. Bursting someone's bubble is like popping their excitement balloon and bringing them back down to reality. You can burst someone's bubble by saying or doing something to show that that person's beliefs are false or that their expectations will not be met, essentially disappointing them. In this scene, the narrator says that the Barbies who live in the Barbie land believe that they have solved all the problems of inequality for women in the real world, which is of course not true. So the narrator says, who am I to burst their bubble? Meaning. Who am I to reveal the truth and disappoint them? To burst someone's bubble. In this phrase, burst is the verb and you can change it into different forms. But please be careful that in the past simple and past participle, the burst doesn't change. So it still says the same. Burst, burst. For example, I have burst or I burst. Now, please don't forget to change someone's. So change it to the person. I burst Sarah's bubble when I told her that unicorns aren't real. She burst his bubble when she told him he didn't make the team. While I was happily daydreaming, she burst my bubble with some bad news. I didn't expect much about the date because my brother had burst my bubble about the guy before. Burst, burst, bubble, bubble, burst someone's bubble, burst someone's bubble. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number two, in no time. Stay with me, Barbie! Great. Not even broken, you'll be fine. Shredding waves is much more dangerous than people realize. You're very brave, Ken. Thank you, Barbie. Yeah. You know surfer's not even my job. I know. And it is not lifeguard, which is a common misconception. Very common. Yeah, because actually my job, it's just beach. Right. And what a good job you do at beach. You should heal up in no time. Actually, in the time that it took for me to say that sentence, you healed. Fantastic. Nice. <laughs> in no time means that things happen so quickly and effortlessly that it's almost like they don't take any time. For example, the chef promised that our food would be ready in no time and he delivered on his word. So as you can see from the picture, for example, you came at 6 p.m. and in five minutes, your food is already ready. That is very fast. So your food is ready in no time. In this scene, the Dr. Barbies are checking Ken and they say that, oh, his arm isn't broken and he should heal up in no time. So he will recover very, very quickly. In no time is the phrase that you usually put at the end of the clause or of the sentence and it remains unchanged. By following the recipe precisely, you can bake delicious cookies in no time. After the rain stopped, the sun came out and the wet ground dried up in no time. He started practicing the piano regularly and in no time he became a skilled pianist. Time. Time. No time. In no time. In no time. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number three, to be bummed. So should it Oh! So, what'll it be then? You can go back to your regular life and forget any of this ever happened. Or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. No, we'll do a redo. You're supposed to want to know. I don't. Mm. Babe, listen, you have to want to know, okay? Do it again. I'm not adventure Barbie, I'm stereotypical Barbie. I'm like the Barbie you think of when someone says, think of a Barbie. That's me. I'm bummed, you're a bummer. That's a bummer. Okay, 
To be bummed is like when your mood goes from happy to upset because something you were looking forward to got cancelled or didn't turn out as expected. It's like having a mini emotional rain cloud over your head. Also, you can just say bummer or what a bummer. Hey, are you coming to the beach party tomorrow? I wish I could, but I have to work late tomorrow. Aw, that's a bummer. We were really looking forward to seeing you there. Maybe next time. In this scene, the weird Barbie said that she's bummed or upset because the stereotypical Barbie chose the heels and not the Birkenstocks, like she had expected. So she called the stereotypical Barbie a bummer. You are a bummer. Be bummed. In this phrase, the verb to be can be changed into different tenses and forms, and the word bummed remains unchanged. I was really bummed when I found out that the concert was sold out. She was bummed because her favorite ice cream flavor was out of stock. I'll be bummed if I can't find my lost car keys before the road trip tomorrow. Or you can also use the word bummer as a noun. It's such a bummer when your phone battery dies right in the middle of an important call. Getting stuck in traffic on the way to the airport was a real bummer. It's a bummer when your favorite restaurant is closed for renovations. Bummer. 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 To be bummed. I'm bummed. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number four, to set oneself up for. And how do I get back? The same way you came, but in reverse. Like I should move forward, but do the order backward. Or Don't ever think backward. it. Oh, okay. For you see, if you do not find her and fix things, what's ugly will become uglier, and what's weird will become weirder. And then you look like me. Ah! Oh! Sorry. I understand. I set myself up for that. Anyway, I believe in you. To set oneself up for something means to create ideal conditions or opportunities for that something to happen. So for a particular outcome, result. Now the result can be both positive or negative. For example, by choosing not to study for the exam, Sarah set herself up for failure. So the conditions were that she didn't study. Those were her actions and they led to a specific outcome, so she failed her exam. Or, for example, by making sure to eat a hearty meal beforehand, John set himself up for a successful hike. In this scene, the weird Barbie says that she set herself up for that reaction because she had been acting weird and scaring the stereotypical Barbie about turning weird like herself. So basically, the weird Barbie expected that reaction. To set oneself up for. So in this phrase, set is the verb and you can change it according to different tenses and you need to change oneself. So you can say myself, herself, yourself, himself, themselves. Okay, so change this word according to the subject. Skipping regular exercise and eating unhealthy food can set oneself up for health problems later in life. They knew that by starting a business without a solid business plan, they were setting themselves up for huge challenges and setbacks. John knew that procrastinating on his work would set himself up for a stressful night before the deadline. Alright, and now let's say the phrase of the weird Barbie together. For that, for that, myself, myself, I set myself. I set myself up for that, up for that. I set myself up for that. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number five, the last resort. Aren't you guys gonna thank me and give me a big hug <laughs> for being your favorite toy? We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Yeah, I hated dolls with hair. I mean, I played with Barbie, but it was like the last resort. I loved Barbie. <clears throat> The last resort is like the emergency exit in a video game. It's your final option when everything else fails. In this scene, the teenager says that she played with Barbies when she was younger, but it was the last resort, meaning that she only played with a Barbie because there were no other options. There weren't any other toys or games. Last resort. We usually use this phrase with the article the 
or possessive adjectives like my, your, his. After trying every possible solution, they had no choice but to turn to bankruptcy as the last resort. In desperate need of medical treatment, he saw the experimental drug as his last resort for a chance at recovery. She knew that therapy was her last resort to overcome her anxiety and depression. He considered borrowing money from his parents as the last resort to cover his unexpected expenses. Resort. Resort. So in this word, the letter S sounds like Z. Resort. The last. The last. The last resort. Now, pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number six, a damsel in distress. Distract them by appearing helpless and confused. Kens cannot resist a damsel in distress. You have to make them believe that you're complacent, that they have the power. And when their guard is down, you take the power back. <laughs> a damsel in distress is a person, usually a young woman, who needs to be saved from danger or trouble of some kind. It's like a princess stuck in a tower waiting for a hero to save her. So we think of a damsel in distress as someone weak and helpless, who always needs help from someone else. In this scene, the Barbies are plotting against the Kens. They say that Kens can't resist a damsel in distress, so they need to pretend to be helpless and weak to trick Kens to help them. A damsel in distress. In this case, damsel is a noun, so damsel means a young lady. In the old movie, the hero always arrived just in time to save the damsel in distress from the villain's evil plans. When her car broke down on the deserted road, she felt like a damsel in distress until a friendly passerby stopped to help. The video game had a recurring theme where the protagonist had to navigate through various levels to save the damsel in distress and defeat the final boss. Distress. Distress. In distress, damsel, damsel. So in this word, the letter S makes the sound Z. Damsel, damsel in distress, damsel in distress. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Number seven and the last one to take for granted. I always thought this would be our house. Ken, I think I owe you an apology. Huh? I'm really sorry I took you for granted. Oh. Not every night had to be girls' night. Thank you for saying that. The phrase to take for granted has two meanings. Number one, this means to believe that something is the truth without even thinking about it. For example, Oh wait, are Jessica and John not married? They've been together for so long that I just took it for granted. So I didn't even think about it, I just assumed that they were married. But this phrase also has a second meaning. So to take something or someone for granted, it means you don't realize that you are grateful for something or someone. Okay, so for example, if you miss calls from friends and don't really take the time to talk to them, you know, in the future, maybe they stop reaching out to you, you realize that you took the friendship for granted. That means you didn't appreciate your friends before and now they're not calling you, so now you miss them. You didn't realize how important they were in the past. You took them for granted. In this movie scene, Barbie apologizes to Ken and says that she took him for granted, meaning that she didn't appreciate him enough before, and now she understands how important he is. To take something or someone for granted. She takes her good health for granted. Why are you taking his health for granted? She took her freedom for granted until she moved away from home. Granted, granted, for granted, for granted, take, take for granted. Now pause the video and practice saying the phrase. Okay, and now it is time for you to do some exercises and check how well you understood the material. 
and remember if you need extra time you can always pause the video. Exercise number one. Choose the correct meaning for each of the given phrases. Exercise number two, fill in the blanks in the sentences below with the appropriate phrases. All of the phrases are the ones that we had studied today and for some you might need to change the form of some words of the phrases, so please be careful. And there you have it, my friends. By watching this video, doing the exercises and writing down some sentence examples with the newly acquired phrases in the comments section down below, you will set yourself up for success in this English learning journey. Continue practicing and in no time, you'll be using them like a pro. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a fun and quick English lesson with PDQ English.